So in our last episode, we asked you for your advice on how best to go about getting a new job. We took a lot of it on board. Today, we're going to show you where we've ended up. So we've got a fair bit of catching up to do. It's been an eventful summer. We played our AFCON qualifiers against Kenya and Ethiopia. Then our thoughts turned to our next job. We put out some job applications and it was the same old story. Rejection after rejection. We weren't even getting through to the interview stage and some of the reasons we were being given for not even getting an interview were truly ludicrous. One club said that our slight, only slight reluctance to rely on set pieces was the reason they couldn't even possibly think about sitting down with us and discussing taking over their one-star club. So I thought that we would be in trouble, but there were more jobs to apply for. We went for them. We got an interview at Elgin City in Scotland's League 2. Semi-professional club wouldn't have been ideal, but at least they offered us an interview. We turned up for it. They came back to us and said... They weren't going to be offering us the job, but at least it was a start. Then we made a little bit of progress. We got another interview, this time for a club in the Slovenian second division. And then things really started to pick up. We got offered an interview at a club that we had not applied to manage. Rujon Barok, who were in the Slovakian Premier Division when we were at Peronia, they approached us out of the blue and invited us to an interview. We turned it down because... We've already managed in Slovakia, but we thought that we were onto something. And I think we were right because a couple of the interviews we attended elicited job offers. First of all, £275 a week to go and manage in the Serbian second division. Granted, that's probably not quite as much money as we would have liked to have been making. It would have been the best part of a £900 a week drop from our wage at Benin but we at least had a job offer in our back pocket. We delayed it because we'd attended more interviews and we wanted to see what else was on the horizon. And it was promising because on that very same day, we got another offer, this time to manage in the Slovenian second division. £425 a week this time. I know we're not talking about the highest standard of football and this would have been at a semi-professional club, but we were now holding job offers from two different clubs. Compared to last summer, that was a stark improvement. But we'd also been to a job interview at a club I was pretty excited about. We got an interview, much to my surprise. And after we attended that interview, they offered us a job as well. And I've got to be honest, it's one I'm pretty happy with. So the next stop on our tour is... Poland and what a club we've managed to land at this time. We're in a city famed for its smelting plants. Yeah, you guessed it, Zabrze, where we've taken over local side Gornik Zabrze. Now in Polish football, Gornik have a long and successful history, which includes 14 league titles. That's the second highest of any Polish club, including five in a row in the 1960s, as well as six Polish cup victories and even a European final appearance, where they narrowly lost to Manchester City in the 1970 Cup Winners' Cup final. But the last few seasons have been difficult for Gornik. In 2022, they were relegated from the top flight, despite the best efforts of German marksman Lukasz Podolski. And last season, the club sunk to 13th in the second tier, leading to the dismissal of Richard Komenicki. This is the biggest club we've managed yet. With a large stadium, a healthy average attendance, and a board who are anticipating a top half finish. So here we are, freshly installed as the boss of Gornik Zabrze. Let's bring you more news as part of accepting this offer. They've paid for us to study our Continental B license. So that's good bit of news number one. They've also got pretty good finances here. They've got nearly four million in the bank. This really is a decent little club. They've got Almost 10,000 season ticket holders. We've shown you the pedigree that they've got in Polish football and in European football as well. We've had to overpromise a little bit to get this job. We've told them that we could secure a top half finish. We've had to make some other promises as well. We've promised that we'll improve our performance in the media. We've promised that there won't be any fallings out with players in the dressing room, although that's already a little bit touch and go. And sadly, we had to promise them that we would relinquish our job as Benin manager as well. So we've only got the one income. 
and that income is slightly less than we were on when we left Peronia. I think we we're on £700 a week at Peronia. £650 a week is the best we could do in our mercenary pursuits this summer. Let's just jump into the dynamics and tell you what's been going on with the squad because we've already had some issues. The transfer window is open. One of the clubs that came in to bid for our right back, who we will show you shortly, he decided that he wanted to go and join. But we're not signing any players, so we're certainly not selling our better ones. We turned down the bid and then a lot of the fringe players came to the office the next day to moan and complain about how we were crushing his dreams. So they're all unhappy with us. But the good news is that some of the more influential players in the hierarchy were proud of how we dealt with that insubordination. So very early on in our Jabja career, we have got the support of one of our team leaders, two of our highly influential players, and two other players from the hierarchy as well. So it looks like we're making a little bit of progress on that front. We're going to introduce you to all of our Gornick players in a moment, but before we do, we need to just catch up on our previous clubs and show you how Dugapolia and Peronia got on last season. So let's start with our first club, Dugapolia. A bit of a disappointing season, if I'm honest. They were back down in the second tier of Croatian football. They only managed to come eighth. They were seven points ahead of the relegation places, never really anywhere near the title. So a disappointing season, I would say, for Dugapolia. They've slipped back to where they were when we took over. But if we have a look at the player that we were keeping an eye on, that was Duja Dravorsic. Well, he left the summer before this season started to join a club in the Dutch second division. He made 15 appearances, average rating of below a seven, and he must have only signed a one-year contract with them because he's back available as a free agent. He's got clubs from his native Croatia as well as a club from Israel that are interested have to wait and see where he's going to end up, but it looks like his career might not be advancing as I thought it was when he first went and joined a club that were in the Dutch second tier. However, if we check in with Peronia, they had a bit of a better season last time around. When we were in charge, they finished seventh, top of the relegation group. They went a place better than that this season. They managed to finish in the championship group. They had a tough time in that group, but they did at least qualify for it, as well as making it all of the way to the Slovakian Cup final. Unfortunately, they lost that final to Spartak Trnava, who finished below them in the league. It was a great opportunity for Peronia to secure a trophy. Unfortunately, they just lost out at the final stage. Our man that we voted to keep an eye on, Patrick Lejiang, well, he is still at the club. He's 31 years old now. Still plenty of years ahead of him as a keeper. But it's starting to look like maybe he's going to spend the rest of his career at Peronia. He had another decent season last campaign. He did let in more goals and he didn't get quite as high an average rating. But still pretty decent from our mate Patrick. But now we've got to start making some new stars that we're going to keep an eye on. So let's introduce you to our new squad. So the obvious downside of joining a Polish club is the names that you have to pronounce. You're going to have to bear with me with some of these, but we have inherited a squad that I think we can get that top half finish with. Let's show you some of our best players. This, I think, could be one of them. Adrian Slim Shady, another decent goalie that we have inherited. He's got pretty good all-round attributes, the aerial reach, the one-on-ones, the reflexes, all pretty good. I'd probably like the agility to be a little bit higher, but he is not a bad start. And we've got a couple of decent defenders as well. We lost a couple of good players who were leaving on free transfers when we joined, but they already had agreed contracts with a couple of other players to come in on free transfers. One of them was Marcel Verhoff Hoffmeyer, who I think might just be our best central defender. He is a German player that's come in from Munster in the German third division, I think. And I think he's another pretty good all-round player. Could be better in the air, only five foot eleven, but certainly I think he has some decent attributes, as does the right back that was causing all kind of transfer fuss earlier on in the week. This is Matthias Bakovic, 
Another all-round good player, very determined, off the ball's pretty good for a rampaging fullback. He can dribble and cross a little bit as well. I think he could be a good outlet for us over on the right, but I think our better players are probably in midfield, such as this little rascal, Magic Morovcha, I think is another good player, 30 years old. Passing's good. Tackling is good. The positioning's decent. The leadership and determination are great. Physically, he's not too bad. Lovely personality. He's going to play at the base of our midfield. And he's got a couple of decent players in front of him as well. This is David Hayek, who was out on loan at Cordoba in Spain last season. We've bought him back. We're not letting him go out on loan again. I think he could be a decent player. He's got lots of attributes that are 10s, 11s, 12s, some cheeky 13s around there. I think as an attack-minded midfielder, he could be good. And alongside him, we've got Norbert Nobby Voschacek. Again, good all-rounder, determined, teamwork, work rate. All pretty good. Passing and tackling, pretty reasonable. Alarmingly, he was probably about 18 when this photo was taken but I think he could be a steely presence in that midfield for us. Another player the club had already agreed to bring in before we arrived, and we're glad that we made this transfer, is Nikola Sukachev, a Swiss player of Croatian ancestry, I think. And he's a pretty decent winger. He's left-footed. We're going to play him on the right. He can dribble. He's reasonably quick. Off the ball is OK. First touch is decent. And we've got other options behind him if we need them. And I think we've also got a bit of a talent over on the left side. This is Peter P.J. Juritka, a Slovakian. So a player that we could actually communicate with. Having learned Slovakian whilst we were at Peronia, he might be the pick of our wingers. He could even play as a striker as well. Again, reasonably quick, decent finisher, composure and off the ball are good. I think PJ could score some goals for us this season. And we might need goals from our midfielders because up front, I'm not sure we're blessed. This is Warkash Volstinski, decent all-rounder. But like a lot of our strikers, has this player trait of coming deep to get the ball, which means we don't have a natural poacher or advanced forward. Some of our other strikers have got this same trait where they all want to run backwards rather than trying to stretch the defence. We've got another decent winger in the form of Arta Shimashko, but again, he's been a bit of a troublemaker. He's already decided that he wants to leave on a free transfer at the end of the season. We turned down some bids for him, and he wasn't very happy about that. Some of them were from top-flight clubs in Poland. So, well, I'm leaving him out at the moment because he's sulking, but again, he's probably the quickest player we've got at the club. I can certainly see a role for him. I would have liked him to be a striker, but he's another one of these players that comes deep to get the ball. Not sure how well that will work as a winger. We'll have to just play it by ear with him. So there's a little introduction to some of our new recruits. We have got players on the bench that could be useful for us as well, such as our young central defender, Damian Plonka. Look out for him later in the season. But for now, we're going to have to send these boys out for their first game of the season. Hopefully we can kick it off with a win, but we should certainly start with a scout report. For our first game in Poland, we're taking on Puszcza, a club tipped to finish 12th this campaign, but who finished 9th last season above Gornik. Experienced coach Richard Wieszarek has been at the helm for 12 months, and he'll be hoping for an opening day victory as his side travel to Szabcza to kick off the season. OK, let's get our time at Gornick underway then. We are in the all-white strips as we will be whenever we're at home like we are this afternoon. 10,000 season tickets. We've got a 25,000 capacity stadium. You never know, we might have as many as 12, 15,000 in this afternoon. Let's hope we can get off to a strong start in charge. And as we say that, three minutes on the clock, here comes our first highlight. Nobby's got the ball in the midfield. And we're building up from the back. Here's one of our centre-backs, Shemanski. Nobby's involved. Here's the magic man. He's looking to pull all the strings for us. We've got the ball through to our, our right winger, Sukashev. I think the goalkeeper has tipped it onto the bar. And we've got a corner early as well. Selma Hayek is taking it. He's gone back post. Nobody there on that occasion. 15 minutes on the clock. Straight into another highlight. Here's the magic man. 
back to the Hoff. I think the Hoff's going to be a pretty composed presence back there. And here is Sukachev, and he's had another chance. The keeper saved it again. I think he could have put one of those chances away that he's had. Never mind. High X on the corner. We are looking pretty good in these early stages. And there's one of our center halves. That is Jakub Szymanski playing as part of that central defense with the Hoff. I think they could be a good duo, those two. We've got another good backup center back, but who was another one where a bid came in and he threw his toys out the pram because we didn't accept it. So Zemanski's starting for us instead as the magic man goes pretty close. And I think they could have a good duo at the back. 21 minutes on the clock. Let's pause the game and tell the players they made a pretty decent start. Okay, the prey shout has gone out. The body language is mm, pretty unaffected, but we're into another highlight. Jerika tries to win the ball back. We're going to tidy it up at the back. Here is our left back, Nobby. Been involved a lot, as has the magic man, Hayek, Sukachev. We've got a raiding right back there. They've not worked it to him. Sukachev has had his third decent chance of the game. That was the best of them. And he couldn't even hit the target. It wasn't even close to being on target. Sukachev is working some good opportunities, but his finishing is... Well, we'll put in the concerning bracket for now, shall we? Here is our right back. That's a great ball in. And PJ comes in at the far post. Our right back, I think, could be a weapon for us. He really does get forward well. In pre-season, granted, we weren't playing the strongest of opponents. But in pre-season, he did look good, that right back. Talking of pre-season, in order just to benchmark how good a club we were at, we did play Peronia in a pre-season friendly and we beat them 3-1. So that shows the kind of level we're at. Even though Peronia are a top six side in the Slovakian top division, we had the beating of them, albeit in a pre-season friendly. So I'm hopeful we might have the semblance of a good squad here. We scored from a corner earlier in the half. We nearly scored from one again. That's our right back, Bakovic, coming in. But you never know. This could work, having a striker that's going to come deep. Here he is again, playing almost in midfield. Now he's ambling forward, but PJ's decided not to use him. Instead, here's the right back. He's in. I think he's struck a post. Shows what a danger that man could be. 15 shots now, 10 on target. Is one goal enough from that first half performance? Not entirely convinced it is. I think we're going to need a second one in the second half, but we've started OK. OK, we are back underway. We told the players that we thought they had another gear, which I think is a fair assessment of the first half. But I do think we need another goal. We've got all the way through to the hour mark. and We've not even had a highlight yet. Never mind another goal. Maybe we need fresh legs. We're going to pause it now. 67 minutes on the clock. I think it could well be up front when we're going to make the change. So the striker we have brought on is Arthur Shimashko, the winger who likes to drop deep, who doesn't even want to be at the club anyway, but at least he is pacey. However, he's not really shown much so far, has him? We're through all the way to 85 minutes. Not sure we've had a highlight in this second half. We need some fresh legs. Nobby, I think, is done in his place. I think we're going to bring on the young Ukrainian midfielder, Arshan Hirosu. He's a pretty decent all-rounder as well. Maybe I'd like him to perhaps work a little bit harder for the team. And I think we're going to need fresh legs somewhere else. Struggling at centre-half. Maybe it's PJ that we might take off. I think the player we're going to bring on is the Bart man. Bart Korbecki. He can take a penalty. He can take a set piece as well. Scored a few goals during pre-season. So we're going to go with the Bart man. I think that's all of our changes made. By the way, another little quirk of managing in Poland to look out for. You have to have a Polish under-21 player on the pitch all of the time. And we don't have that many in the squad. We do have some youngsters, but they're annoyingly just over the age of 21. Now, that's something we might need to factor in as we go through the season. However, I am pleased because we've got an opening day victory in our time at Gornik Shabsha. I think there's a lot of work ahead of us. It's going to be a long gold season in Poland, but by the time you come back, we will have maybe the first quarter of the season under our belts, and we might be able to assess how ambitious we can be at our time with Gornick.